Today we have another chance to talk about life and how to develop our life to be a better life. Many people talk about mindfulness or sati in Buddhist teaching and it's very important teaching, important practice for every life. Our life responds to many things that come to our ears, eyes, nose, tongue, body and mind. And when this kind of input come to our life, we have a chance to choose how to react with this kind of input. If we are mindful, we will have a chance to think and choose the better way to react. But if we are not mindful, we will follow Gilesa and respond badly to that phenomenon. The important question is how can we develop mindfulness in our real life? For example, if someone comes to do bad things to you, say bad words to you, and if you are not mindful, maybe you do something bad or react worsely. At that moment, when we hear the bad word, how can we be mindful? How can we stop before we act badly? This is very important skill that we have to practice. Actually, since we are young, since we were young, we should practice this kind of things. If you have a boy, if you have a child, we should practice this kind of skills. And how? In Buddhist teaching, we have a simple example of mindfulness practice. We know a monkey. Monkey will run around, and if there is something happen, a coconut flute fall down, any noise happens, the monkey will run to see or to play with that. And they run around the field and cannot be, cannot be calm, cannot stop easily. It's like our mind, we can test, we can observe. Is it true? Our own mind, for example, when we sit, relax, and let the mind think about something, you can see that the mind will try to think about something funny, try to think about something that is very interesting for one's own mind. Think about this, think about that, think about those. It's like a monkey that runs always and not easy to stop. And if we, if we observe our mind, when our mind runs to did that dose, it happens all the time. And sometimes when we have very worried story, some problems in our life, our mind will think about that story always and not easy to stop. And it makes we waste a lot of power in our life. We waste a lot of energy of our life to run like a monkey. What can we do is to practice a monkey, learn to stop. How to teach a monkey to stop in real life. When someone try to tame a monkey. He put a rope, one side of a rope, tie a monkey, and another, th another side tie with a pole or a tree. If someone do like this, a monkey can run, but only for a distance of the rope. When a monkey runs, to the end of the rope. The rope 
will put the monkey back and not allow the monkey to run further. And when the monkey was pulled back, it might come back to the pole and stop just for a while. And then they run again. It's the same phenomena happens to our mind. When we practice to put our mind come back to something, for example, our own breath. Our own breath, breathing in and breathing out, is like a pole. And the rope is mindfulness or sati. When our mind, like a monkey, want to run away, and sati will tell the mind not to go so far and come back to the object that is the pole. For example, breathing. When our mind try to think about bad story, happy story, and go so far, the mindfulness will tell the mind to come back to the breath. This is the way to practice. And when someone practice more and more, the more we practice, the shorter the, shorter the rope is. Firstly, when we start practicing, our rope is so long, the mind goes and think about many stories for a long time and not come back easily. But when we practice more and more, the rope will be shorter and the mind will come back to the object of meditation easier. And when we first practice, the monkey will come back to the pole just for a very short time, maybe just a few seconds, and then it go again. Our mind as well. It comes to the object of meditation, for example, breathing, for just a few breaths. Maybe just breathe in and breathe out, and then it go away. But when we practice longer, the monkey can stop at the pole longer. Our mind will be with the object of meditation longer. And when the mind can stop still and observe the object of meditation, for example, breathing for a period of time, at that moment is the practice of samadhi or concentration. And this is one of the objective of meditation practice in Buddhist teaching. When the mind is concentrated to something, it will be more powerful. This happens when we read a book, when we prepare for examination. If we have a concentrated mind, if the mind focused on what we are reading, we will learn, we will understand, we will gather information from that reading effectively. On the other hand, if the mind don't focus, don't concentrate, when we read, we don't understand, we don't know, we don't get information from that reading. It also happens when we talk to our sons, when we talk to our mother, when we talk with our customers, when we live with everyone around. If we have mindful, mindfulness, if our mind concentrate on what we are doing, we can do that effectively. We can understand people around us in details, really effectively. To do so, we have to practice our mind, to be able to concentrate on what we want the mind to be concentrated on. When we want to read a book, we want our mind to be able to concentrate on reading. When we talk to our boy, our girls, our child, our mothers, our fathers, 
we want our mind to concentrate on the people who are in front of us when we are driving. We want our mind to concentrate on the driving when we eat. We don't want our mind to think about this, that, those and bite our own tongue. We want our mind to concentrate on what we are doing. This is important and to do so, we need to practice. To practice the mind is like practice the body. When we want to practice our body, we go to fitness and we do running, we do weight lifting. To do so, we don't want to get or bring the weight back home. But what we get is the strength of the muscle. On the same way, when we practice meditation, we breathe in and breathe out. We observe our own breathing. And when we observe, we breathe in and breathe out. It looks like when we lift the weight up and down, up and down. What we get from lifting the weight is the strength muscle. And when we observe the breathing, is the way to practice the monkey to come back to the pole and stop still there. The mind, when it is practiced, to be concentrated on breathing, it will be more powerful. It's like a powerful muscle. It will be more and more powerful. The more we practice, the more powerful the mind will be. So in conclusion, the way to practice our mind is to tame, is to make it learn how to stop. Make it concentrate to the object of meditation. This is the first step of meditation practice in Buddhist teaching. We call the state of being still and know what we are doing at that moment is mindfulness or sati. And if our mind can concentrate on something continuously for a period of time, we call it concentration or samadhi. To practice to this step, we call the calmness meditation or concentration meditation. In Pali words, we call samatha kamathan. And samatha kamathan or concentration meditation is the best for the next step of meditation practice in Buddhist teaching called vipassana kamathan or insight meditation. Insight meditation is the way to use the quality of sati or concentration to observe the real phenomena of our own life. When we are mindful and our mind can concentrate on the object, powerful, we will see what happens to our body and mind when we are happy, when we are suffering, when we are bored, when we are any, any feeling happens, we will see how it happens and then how it changed and finally how it disappeared. We will see that our body and mind work together, affect each other all the time. What happened to our body leads to something in our mind. And that thing happens just for a few, a very few seconds, and then it changes or disappears. Both happiness or unhappiness, nothing permanent. It changes all the time. If we don't observe, if we don't know, we might think that happiness is very important things for life. It's very important. 
and it will last long to make our life happy. But in fact, happiness does not last long. It happens just for a very few seconds. When we eat very delicious food, how many seconds the delicious food can give happiness to our life? When we hear sweet words, how long happiness happens to our life? When we get a new smartphone, how long happiness happens to our life? It's not that long. If we observe, we will see that happiness, suffering, and every, every things that happens to our body and mind change all the time. And once we understand this real phenomena that happens to our life, we will attach to this happiness and unhappiness less and less. We will not think that we have to spend our whole life to search for, to seek for happiness. But we will understand that our life is not only for searching for happiness, but for doing good things, to do better things to our own life and our society. This kind of phenomena start from practicing mindfulness. If we practice mindfulness more and more, it's the way to make us understand our own life more and more. And the more we understand our life, the better chance we can develop our own life and do better things to others. This kind of big things start from very simple practice to practice to tame the monkey, to cultivate concentration and mindfulness in our mind. And it can happen here and now. We can start this kind of practice here and now. No need to find expensive fitness for this practice. Every time that we have a chance to breathe, we have a chance to practice mindfulness. And it will be very useful for everyone's life. And we hope that you enjoy practicing mindfulness and enjoy developing everyone's own life for a better life and better world. Thank you.